What's going on guys? Welcome to the channel. My name is Mitch. Episode three of the Joust. We're breaking down the 2023 AVCA Division Three men's volleyball all-American team. I'm excited for this one. Let's take a dive right into it. The American Volleyball Coaches Association yesterday announced the 2023 All-American team, which is the which is comprised of 28 players making up the first and second team All-America men's volleyball. I'm gonna break down the list a little bit and give my insight, give my analysis, give my thoughts. One of the first things that I noticed from this list are three of the players are four-time Division Three All-Americans. And those three being Jared Anderson, Josh Bigford, and Andrew Zatlick. And interestingly enough, two of these guys are lefties and right sides, which is not, you know, I wouldn't say it's the easiest position to be the best player on your team, but these two guys are definitely the best of the best in their conference and well-deserving of All-America status because they just find ways to put the ball down more than everyone else. Jared Anderson this year, 359 kills on 412 hitting percentage. And to top that off, 90 aces on the season, which easily led all of Division Three Volleyball this year. That is special. And there's a, there's a reason why he was four-team All-American. Special player, and, and Springfield is definitely gonna miss this guy next year. Just a juggernaut on the right side. And the same thing can be said for Zalek. 360 kills this year, 5.2 points per set for Zalek in his 2023 campaign. Both of these players, seniors in their final season and showing out in all the right ways. Zalek got his Rutgers team with a big upset over SVU to make it to the CVC conference tourney. And Anderson found, finding a way to to will that Springfield team into the tournament and they got upset in the first round a little bit by SVU. But both these guys, big time players. Josh Bigford, another great player. Four team, four time All-American. Let's look at his stats. Three, 333 hitting percentage on the outside, which is really good, 324 kills. He's been Mr. Consistent from St. John Fisher his whole time there and he's their go-to, he was their go-to guy. You add on top of that 53, blo 53 blocks and 102 digs. All these guys are, are legit, they're the real deal. Looking at this list, we have specifically on the first team, 14 players. Now I picked three guys from this list that are the most feared. When I say most feared, I mean a player that as a coach, you're sitting on the bench and this guy comes in the front row and you are you completely have to reassess your game plan. You have to adjust everything. You have to think about ways to get more hands in front of them. Think about how you're manipulating your block to make sure you're paying attention where they are at all times. Telling your middles to maybe hedge one way or hedge another way or focus their, focus their block on this particular guy. Those three players are Kevin Duffy from Juniata, Jared Anderson from Springfield, Gavin Van Beveren from Vassar. And I'm gonna throw another one on there, Mason Nisley from Messiah, because these are all high volume guys. They're gonna find the ball not only a lot of times a game, for the pins for, for Nisley specifically, 40 plus, 45, potentially getting 45 plus attacks a game, which is a lot for your average player, but he's a guy that is putting the ball away at a high clip. So it's just something that Messiah has been able to do over the years. And when he's so effective and efficient out there in the court, it's not something they think twice about. Gavin Van Buren, Gavin Van Beveren from Vassar, another player that you fear more because of his blocking abilities. This year, 91 blocks, 1.19 blocks per set. You pair that with a 530 hitting percentage on the year, he's a guy that you don't want to see in the front row. Um, you don't want to see on the other side of the court because he is going to put the ball down or get a touch on it and find a way to run that ball back down your throat. Pause. He's on my most feared list because of those two reasons. 
I also said Jared Anderson, another guy that when he's setting the ball, there's a good chance that he's going to put it away. He's going to kill it. So, again, a right side, not a player that you usually focusing on as much. Sometimes, you know, the D ball, you let it go or you're holding with your one-on-one -on -one option out there on the right side, but he's a guy that you have to tell your middles to think twice about leaving him by himself on an island out there. Get some hands out there if you can because he is going to find a way to find the, find the court and put the ball down. And Kevin Duffy from Juniata, I touched on him briefly, but he always finds a way to get the ball in his hands and his setters do a good job of that. Reese Ganter did a remarkable job of that this year, but he swings heavy and swings hard, finds the gaps within the blocks and you know when he hits the ball into the open court, you're not digging in for the most part. I mean, you gotta really front the guy, you gotta get hands in front of his face and that's the only way you're gonna slow him down. But I'll take any other middle I'll take a, I'll take almost 98% of other middles in the front row instead of him. He's just a big threat and someone that is feared out there on the court. All right, next topic, libero of the year. I'm giving this to Seth Terzo, Nazareth College. I mean, he had a big, an enormous year this year, 235 digs. We're talking 2.42 digs per set, 60 assists, and opponents hitting less than 200 hitting on the year. Opponents hitting less than 200 on the year. That's, I mean, it doesn't get much better than that, but this is the stat that breaks all of them. This is why I'm giving him the, this is why I'm giving him libero of the year. 11 reception errors on the year and 97 sets played, 11. If you can limit reception errors, Give your setter a chance to set the ball on every play. You're going to find the court. And if you're doing it less than 15 times a year, you get my vote for libero of the year. I don't know about anybody else, but liberos have to be your anchor on service eve. Definitely you want someone who can defend, pick up balls, be a vacuum back there. 235 is definitely a, a high mark in that rate, but serve receive 11 reception errors on the year. Doesn't get much better than that. All right, next thing I'm covering, team effort. So we have four teams left in the NCAA tournament in the final four, Vassar, North Central, Messiah, and Stevens Institute of Technology. And of those teams, we still have a couple players in the tournament that are on this list. And the reason for that is because it takes a team effort. You don't make it this far in the tournament by you know one guy. It takes an effort. Each of these teams left in the tournament have at least two guys on this All-American all roster. We'll start with Vaster. Three All-American players on the first team. Andrew Kim, Jacob Kim, and Gavin Van Beveren. They were the number one team all year for a reason, and these guys are the reason for that. North Central, another team who has taken over the Midwest this year, and that is because of Jeremy Cardenas, Jared Moser, and Tyler Donovan, three guys that have been anchors for them this season, and they have a shot, you know? They have just as good of a chance as anybody else to make it to that national championship spot, and you know, I'm pulling for them. I think they have, they have just as good a shot as anybody to win it, so we'll see what happens, but they are, definitely earned these guys spots in the All-America team this year. Messiah, their two best players this year, and it's really been their two key pieces the past couple years. Mason Nisley on the outside, Matt Nab setting. Seems like Matt Nab has been there since this program, hopped onto the Division Three scene. I think he might have been, I think he might have been on the team when they first transitioned from the club to the D3 space. But anyways, two prime time players, you know they're gonna be involved in the action. If they're scoring points, it's either coming from Nab or Nisley 60% of the time. I'm excited to see this matchup against Stevens and see, you know, who is able to win. Because like I said before, it's hard to beat a team multiple times and it's a, it could be anyone's game. And lastly, Stevens, Percy Bickford, Loudon Moran, and Kobe Sherman, three players that have really really sparked the Stevens team the whole year. Two seniors, 
and a sophomore. And like I said, they're my pick to win the Division Three National Championship this year. We'll see how it goes, but again, big shout out to these guys that all made it on the All-American list this year. You know, all well-deserving, all really big for their program. It doesn't come easy. You have to have the stats. You have to have some sort of, you have to have some competitiveness to your team um, and show that not only are you gonna put up the numbers all year, but are you gonna help your team win? You know, that factors into a lot of these teams being in the NCAA tournament, making it to their conference conference finals. A lot of these teams have players that were in the top 15 rankings in the country all year. Big shout out to these guys, obviously, being from Marymount, Hayden Karikas, a player that I think is deserving to be on this list because, you know, maybe he didn't have the volume of some of these guys, but he was just as effective in the big games, shut down big players, had an 18 kill game in our conference quarterfinals. I mean, had some of the biggest highlight reels of the year. You know, if there's one guy that I, I wish was on this list that wasn't, I'd uh, be a little selfish in saying that I wish Hayden was on this list, but you know, it is what it is. I'm not one of the voters. I'm not one of the voters yet, but um, really proud of how Division Three volleyball has carried itself in the landscape this year. I think it's a sport that's growing. A lot of new teams joining the way, and um, this is this is huge. Stuff like this, you know, teams and players deserve to be recognized for their achievements. Happy to talk about it. Love chatting about this stuff. I'm excited to see how some of these players that are younger, some of the freshmen, sophomores, and juniors that are returning are gonna develop and continue to grow into 2024 next season. So we'll see how that happens. We'll see who ends up making it on this list next year. I'm excited to, to make a video when that time comes. But for now, we'll see you guys um, after the Division Three National Championship. And thanks for tuning into the video keeping up with the joust, and we'll see you guys next time. Peace.